title of my message this morning is Living Hope. Somebody say hope. You know, when I think about hope, I think about something, uh, a, a desire for a certain thing to happen. I, I, I have hope that my God is going to come back and He's going to get His own. I have hope uh, that, that I'm going to stand in victory one day with the, with the Lord Almighty. I'm going to get to say, yo, John the Baptist, what's up, bro? Hey, why did you do this? Yo, Paul, man, what's up, Paul? Yo, hey, uh, hey, let's visit a little while. I'm going to get to stand in glory with, with men and women of God, men and re- women of renown, and I'm going to be able to experience the glory of God like I never have seen before. Are you excited about that? Amen. See, let's just read First John 2 and 28. Uh, and now, little children, somebody say children, abide in Him that when He appears, somebody say appears, we may have confidence and not be ashamed before Him at His coming. Now, I just want to tell you this morning, I had planned to to go all the way to chapter 3, verses uh, verses 2 and 3, but we're just going to unpack this one verse this morning because there's a lot here. If we are to have a living hope, we must see today that a living hope abides in in Christ, but it starts here with little children. Now I want to tell you today, you might be an adult, you might be grown, you might be 80 years old up in here today, but you need to know something. If you are a child of the King of Kings and Lord of Lords, you are a child in His eyes, and He is your Father, and He is always saying, come to Me. I love you. I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. You are a child. He is your Father, and He is there for you today. He is there in your trial. He is there in your trouble. He is there in every situation. You might face faith. And if you have that faith to abide in Him, He is there for you. Faith that abides, little children. The word is technion. And it is to everyone who believes. We are all little children if we are a believer in Jesus Christ. I think of that song. You all know that song that you uh, you learned whenever you was really young, really young, really young. Jesus loves the little who. Jesus loves little children. What's the next part? Huh? All the children of the world. You know what I'm saying? You know what? Oh. It's not, that's not just a song. That's a song we can sing on a Sunday morning. You want to know why? Because if you're a child of God, and He is your Father, He, he loves you. This is with an endless love. This is a, a love that loves loudly. This is the love that, that looked over the balconies of heaven, and He, and he saw you, and he, he saw you with compassion, and He said, I want to do something for them. So I'm going to send this son of mine named Jesus and he's going to pay the price for the sins of the world so that everyone can trust and believe, so that everyone can, can understand that he loves us with an endless love. You know, but when I think of this word, let's look, let's look at this, this verse again, 28. Now little children abide. When I think of the word abide, I, I first thought, man... It'd be like saying, yo, Jesus, hey, come over for dinner. Yo, Jesus, uh, let's go bowling. Any of y'all ever went bowling? Bowling? Any of y'all ever went, uh, any of y'all ever went to the grocery store? Man, I got three people raising their hand, and I got a hundred lying today. Come on, somebody. Hey, hey, we're, uh, hey, uh, me preaching, that is a, it's not just a me doing it. Y'all, y'all got to be a part of this too, or it ain't going to work. You know what I'm saying? So, so listen, it, it, it makes me think of, of, uh, saying, hey, come on over here. Come, come, and let's, uh, let's do this together. Let's, let's go to the woods. Let's go fishing. Let's, let's go hunting. You know what I'm saying? But, but when I think of, uh, Abad, look at John 15, 7. Pull that up, Gary. John 15, 7. And it says it this way. If you, somebody say you. Abide in me, and my words abide in you. You will ask what you desire, and it shall be done done for you. See, I wonder how many times, any of y'all pray? How many prayer warriors I got in the house? Okay, we ain't lying as much now. So, so whenever I think of, of this verse, we like to do the asking. Whatever you ask, 
Whatever you desire for, it will be done for you. I think about how many times in my life that I've been like, yo, God, I need a breakthrough in my marriage. Yo, God, I need a breakthrough in this, in this financial struggle. Yo, God, I need a breakthrough. I need to get this job. Yo, God, I need this. God, God, how many times have you said, Lord, I need you to let me get that truck. Or I need you to help me to get this house. I need you to help me to get this job. If we want to ask God for things, but we're not abiding in Him, but we're expecting the things that He, that he is going to give us. Can I just tell you something this morning? How can you expect God to hear your prayer if you ain't abiding in Him in the first place? You know what I'm saying? My goodness, amen. Hallelujah. See, see, I, I feel like so often it's like, yo, Jesus. We, we're, we're like, yo, Jesus. We're going to pass, passionately pursue Him whenever we need Him, but we forget that we're to, to walk this thing out with Him Monday through Saturday. See, so often it's like we put this show on like, hey, I go to church on Sunday, I'm a Christian, I, I do the right thing, I, I do good deeds, I, I put some money in the plate. But, but, but abiding in Him is more than just a Sunday gathering. Understand that. Abiding in Him is, is saying, you know what, I'll wake up ten minutes early in the morning and, I, and I'll, I'll pray. I'll, I'll have a Bible study. Abiding in Him is turning that crap off of your radio and listening to some Caleb, please. You know what I'm saying? And can I just tell you, if your kids are constantly hearing those cuss words on that radio, they're going to start saying those cuss words at their school and at your home. Hello. I'm just being, I'm being honest with you today. Abide. How can you expect God to move in your life if you're not letting Him truly abide in your life? Any of you ever went to a convenience store? Hey Amen. Y'all are raising hands good today. I talked last week about how for seven years of my life I made excuses and I did not follow the God, God the way that He had called me to. A lot of times in those seven years of my life, I treated God like a convenience store. You know, you need gas, you stop and you get gas, right? You need, you want to get you a Mountain Dew? Holla. You're going to stop in there, you're going to get you a Mountain Dew, and then you're going to be on your way because it's convenient to just stop and get what you need. And I think about how many times we treat God like He's just a convenience store. It's convenient, it's convenient to, to go to God when you have a need. It, it's convenient to call on Him whenever you want something. Can I just tell you that, that we don't need to be treating God like He's a convenience store. We need to treat God like He is and was and is to come, like He is living and breathing and sharper than any two-edged sword, like He is there for you and that He is inside of you. See, so often we push down the Holy Spirit that is within us instead of living, uh, letting that light of Jesus shine out of us. And see, see, I wonder what it would be like if some, if some people from New Beginnings said they wanted to get up out of this place and shine bright like a diamond. Come on, somebody. I wonder what it would be like if we were walking around in our lives, you know, like, hey, guess what? I got this Lord of mine. I got this Jesus of mine. And it's not something I'm just holding on to, but it's something I want to give to you. Why? Because God wants to do infinitely more than you can ever ask, think, or imagine. God wants to move not just in your life, but through your life. And see, if we understand that with the abiding with Jesus, it's, it's uh, abiding uh, not just in a classroom, it's abiding in the hallways, it's abiding whenever we're in the marketplace, and it's showing and shining the love of Jesus Christ to a lost and dying world. So abiding, we must be growing in the Word, we must be growing in our worship, we must be growing in our prayer life. And we must be having this intimacy with God. Now look at verse 15, 8. John chapter 15, 8. In this verse. By this my Father is glorified, <laughs> that you bear much, what? Somebody say fruit. So you will be my disciples. I wasn't saying, you want fruit? you got to abide in Him. You know, um... I think of it this way. When I think of fruit, man, I want an orchard. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, I want the fruit. I want to plant seeds and see those. Oh, here's the thing. When you plant a seed, somebody, any of y'all ever planted corn? If you plant a seed to grow some corn, 
it don't just create one stalk of corn usually, right? See, it creates multiple stalks of corn. See, see, the goal is for me to for me to plant a seed in Lori's heart, and me to plant a seed in Lisa's heart and Sadie's heart. And see, the goal is for me. Oh, let me just say this: if you have a need, you got to plant a seed. Let, let's get that out of the way. But. My goal is for me to plant a seed inside of them so that God can sprout another seed outside of them into somebody else. And see, can I just tell you today, some of the greatest seeds you will ever plant will not be to somebody uh, that, that you see in Walmart. It might be a, a seed that you plant in your own son or daughter's heart. And see, if we will learn how to make disciples within our own family, I believe that is the picture that God wants us to paint. I, I believe that it needs to start in your own home and then it can go out of there. Does that make sense? I believe if we're going to be seed planters, we need to start planting within our own house. And that's not just in this, in this house, but in the houses that we live in day to day in our lives. So, um, uh, by this my Father is glorified that you bear much fruit so that you will be my Disciples. Being a disciple without abiding is bearing a fruit. How, how many of y'all think a fruit is going to become a fruit if it ain't got a vine to grow on? Hmm? How many? If I planted, let's say I come over here and I plant an apple tree. And then this apple tree, it, gr- it grows really big. And, man, it's got all kinds of apples on it. You know what I'm saying? All kinds of apples. But then Curtis comes over here. And Curtis is going to chop the tree down. And the other day, man, these, these apples were green. These apples, they look juicy. You know what I'm saying? They look good. Two or three days later, they don't look so juicy and good anymore, right? And I tell you, if you are not connected to the vine, see, the, the roots grow deep, and, and what happens, they, they, they create, they, they pull nutrients, and, and, and they create, uh, they have the water, and they have the sun, and, and they work together to fulfill what the, the tree is to, to, uh, to make, and it's the fruit. And see, I, I wonder if we're not really producing fruit because we're not connected to the vine. Oh, I'm the vine, and you are the branches, and if you abide in me, you will bear much, you will bear much. Maybe we need some fruit bearers. Maybe we need to be some abiders in Christ that, that, that when, whenever we connect to the cross, oh, whenever we connect to the cross, we don't just leave it on the wayside, but we keep holding on, and we keep holding on, and we say, you know what, God, I'm going to hide your word in my, heart, in my heart so I won't sin against you, God. I'm going to keep holding on to you. I'm going to keep one eye on you. I'm going to keep one eye on the cross, and I'm going to keep pushing. I'm going to keep growing. I'm going to keep serving because I... I love you because you loved me. You died for me. You gave him yourself for me as a ransom, as a propitiation so my sins can be forgiven so I can be washed white as snow. Give him praise. A disciple of Jesus Christ is made to abide. A living hope is a hope that abides in Christ. Choose today whom you will serve. You can either be connected to the branch or you can just rot away. See, if the branch is broken, a two, a two or three days later, your, your fruit, actually as soon as it's broke off, it starts to rot. You want to know why there's certain situations in your life that you just can't see a breakthrough in? Are you abiding in Christ? Are you connected to the branch? So often... We're running away and not seeking Him day by day. Who are you today? Let's look back at 1 John. Go, go to 1 John 2.24. Let's look back there. 1 John 2.24 Therefore let that abide in you which you heard from the beginning. If what you heard from the beginning abides in you, you also will abide in the Son and in the Father. Now, what is that that was in the beginning? What, what is this thing that he's talking about? And, and, and in a lot of your Bibles, it probably talks about abiding in the truth. What is that truth? That is the truth of the Gospel. That is the truth 
that Jesus came, that Jesus lived, and that Jesus died. And guess what? That Jesus is coming back again. That is what this is talking about. We must be continually reminding ourselves, where does our help come from? come from? Where does our hope come from? It comes from the Lord, the Maker of heaven and earth. Why do we look forward to His coming? Because that is what He is going to do. He's going to come back. He's going to get His own and we're going to be in glory forever. Can I get a witness? Hey, that's awesome. That's what I celebrate. That's what I live for. There's going to be a day where there's no more cry. Revelation 21 4 says, There's going to be no more tears. There's going to be no more shame. It will all be glory. It will all be glory. Back to 1 John 2 28. Point number two this morning Living Hope looks forward to His appearing. His appearing. And now, little children, abide in Him that when He appears, somebody say appears, we may have confidence and not be ashamed before Him at His coming. Now this word, uh, let's look at when. Understand today that uh, that we not need to be worrying about the when He is coming. We need to be, be, be prepared for when He comes. Don't worry so much about when it's going to happen. You need to be prepared when it does happen. <clears throat> we know that when He appears, it's going to be a bad time on this earth. What does it tell us? There's going to be wars and rumors of war. Nations will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom and there will be fam famines and, and there will be uh, earthquakes in various places and people are going to be killed and hated by all kinds of nations all around. There will be false prophets rising up. But when you see the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel, the prophet, standing in the holy place, what does it say? Flee. There will be a great tribulation such as that has never been seen before. But that day, that hour, nobody knows. Jesus said, not even me nor any of the other angels knows, but only God. So what are we to do? We're to be watchful. Matthew 24, 42 says, Watch therefore, for you do not know what hour your Lord is coming. Luke records it this way. He records Jesus saying, For as the lightning comes from the east and flashes to the west, so also will the coming of the Son of Man be. There's Paul. He told the church of Thessalonica, it will be like a thief in the night. Not literally like it's going to be quiet because I heard there was going to be a trumpet sound. You know what I'm saying? But what it literally meant is, you ain't going to know it. it's going to be said. And it's going to happen. And when it happens, we will experience and see glory. I don't know when, but I know that my hope is in the return that Jesus Christ is coming back. Amen. Look at Luke 21, 27, and 28. So we don't know when, but let's look at how. Let's look at how. Verse 27 of Luke 21, Then they will see the Son of Man coming in a what? Somebody say cloud with power and great glory. Now when these things begin to happen, look up and lift up your head because your redemption draws near. It was in Daniel, in the Old Testament. Daniel 7, 13 and 14 says, I was watching in the night visions and behold, one like the Son of Man coming with the clouds of heaven. Now this is, this is in the Old Testament. This is 700 years before Jesus ever came and Daniel has a dream here and he's talking about Jesus coming back. And they brought him near before him, then to him, and given him dominion and glory, and all of the kingdoms that all people, nations, and languages should serve him. His dominion is an everlasting dominion, which shall not pass away. In his kingdom, the one which shall not be destroyed. Now, I want to tell you something here. It always talks. Y'all ever heard that Jesus is going to be coming on the clouds? I want to tell you something very interesting, very cool. The word cloud in the Hebrew language, it also means flesh. As to say this, Jesus, He came and He lived and He died and He rose again as, as, as a living, breathing man with, with blood. With, he, wasn't, you know, he didn't have milk running through His veins. He had blood just like you and me. But He's also coming back in the flesh to get His own. Just as a man, just like you and me. I think that's awesome. I think that's awesome. 
He's coming back in a fleshly human form. Matthew twenty four thirty one, And He will send His angels with a great sound of a trumpet. So, we see the wind. We don't know when, but we need to be ready for the wind. We see the why now. Why is He coming back? Because He's coming back to get His own. Amen. He's coming back for the believers, the people that have believed and trusted in Him. He's coming back to get the church of which the gates of hell shall not prevail. He's coming back. And I'm thankful for that today. Point number three. This morning, we could be ashamed. Let's look at the verse again. And now, little children, abide in Him that when He appears, we may have confidence and not be ashamed before Him at His coming. You know, Christ's return should be a joyous occasion for every believer. Oh, many times I've laid down at night and just thought about being able to walk the streets of gold, being able to see the saints of old, being able to see the people that's, been, that's gone on before us. I just smile and think, man, that's going to be awesome. I'm going to be like, yo, Billy Graham, what's up, dog? Yo, man. I like, man, amazing expositor of the Word of God, but it's going to be awesome. It's going to be glorious, you know. But, you know, to think about the joy of it, it's not going to be very joyous for people who don't believe. It's not going to be very joyous for people who do not believe. John says it's also going to be a day of shame for unbelievers. Jesus Himself warned us of this, Mark eight thirty eight. For whoever is ashamed of Me and My words in this adulterous and sinful generation... Can I just tell you, this is the adulterous and this is the sinful generation. And if you're ashamed of Me now, if you're ashamed of, of Him, the Son of Man also will be ashamed when He comes in the glory of His Father with the holy angels. Now... Now, the phrase may be ashamed before Him could also be translated will not shrink in shame from Him. When Jesus comes, some Christians will be so embarrassed. Y'all ever had a doll? Any of y'all ever had a black lab? Chocolate lab? Oh, my goodness. I got one of those. Every time my dog wants to chew up something, I mean, I'm talking just chew stuff up, stuff going everywhere. You know what I'm saying? I come up in the house, and there's stuff everywhere. And all I got to do is say, hey, what's that dog do? He puts his forward tail between his legs and he just gets down. You know what I'm saying? And he looks at me, soft eyes. And he starts doing this. I wonder how many people, whenever they see Jesus, they're going to put their tail between their legs and they're going to be embarrassed for the life that they live and not serving their Savior. Can I just tell you something? We're called to a life of obedience, right? We're called to a life of faith and trust in Jesus Christ. And I think about going back to those seven years of my life where I made excuses. Those seven years of my life where I ran in the opposite direction. I didn't care about what God had called me to do. I didn't care about what I was supposed to be doing. All I cared about was fulfilling the fleshly, lustfully desires of my flesh. I knew when all of that was going on, when I was running from God, what He called me to. But I was living in direct disobedience of Him. And I tell you, that's sin. He who knows what to do and doeth not has committed sin already. So, so if we look in, in harmony with the Scripture, if we know we're supposed to be praying, if we know we're supposed to be reading, if we know that we're called to worship, if we know that we're called to unite with a body of Christ and fellowship and grow within the church, then, then if we look at the Scripture for what it says and, and, and it being real, what is it? it is sin already if we don't do what He has called and commanded us to do. Guys, that's real. And I wonder how many people are going to stand before a righteous judge and be, be uh, so ashamed of themselves just like my dog is whenever he sees something up. Hmm. So how can we not be ashamed when He comes? Can I tell you? We can abide in Him today. That's what this is talking about. In 1 John, it talks uh, 20 different times 
it says, uh, and this is what's funny, ten, ten times it says abide in Him, and ten times it says abide in Jesus. And, and all throughout this, this, this book, it's talking about abiding in Him, living for Him, living with Him, having intimacy with Him. It's 1 Timothy 3.15 says, If I am delayed, this is Paul, Scratch that. But if I am delayed, I write to, so that you may know how you ought to conduct yourself in the what? The house of God, which is the church of the living God, the pillar and ground of the truth. This is the church is the pillar and the ground of truth. Can I just tell you, God has entrusted us, new beginnings, with, with the truth of God's Word, with the, with the Spirit of Him, with the, with the manifest glory of Him working in and through us, in and through our lives. And the vehicle that He uses to proclaim His truth is through the church. The, the church body. So, so it's not just something I'm proclaiming in here, but it's something that Lori is proclaiming in there. It's something Lisa is, is proclaiming uh, at, at the hospital. It's something that we're all to be proclaiming and living out in people's lives. It's not something that we just come to and hear about, but it's something that we, that we live out every day of our lives. We are the vehicle that He uses. So I want to tell you three things here. A, you owe your church your presence. Hebrews 10.25, Do not forsake the assembling of yourself together as it is the manner of some, but exhorting one another and so much for the more as you see that day approaching. Why are we to abide? Because there is a day approaching. We are to be ready and we are to be watchful with other believers and we are to, to walk Hand in hand, we are to join arms together as a rank, as a force, as an army waiting and, and ready for any attack to come. And if Satan wants to put a wall up, we say, no, sir, my friend, I'm going to tear it down. I've got the Spirit of God. I've got the anointing of God. And I am who I am. I am made new. And there's nothing that will stand before me that can prosper. I will stop the enemy under my feet. He can't have my home. He can't have my marriage. He can't have my home. Heart. He can't have my mind because I am made new because I got the Spirit inside of me. Do you? Do you? Amen, baby. Out of the mouths of babes. Come on. So you owe your church your prayers. B. Ephesians 6.18 Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit. Being watchful. To this end, with all perseverance and supplication for all the saints. Can I just tell you, if you're a child of the King of Kings and Lord of Lords in here today, you are a saint. See, you owe your church your participation. Ephesians 4.16, from whom the whole body, joined and knit together by what every joint supplies according to the effective working by which every part does its share, causes growth of the body, purifying of itself in love. Musicians, y'all go ahead and come forward. You know, joined and knit together by what every joint supplies. Can I just tell you today, if you're here in this house this morning, God has a purpose and a desire for you to serve Him in and through His church. Amen? Now, I want to also tell you this. There is no one person greater than anyone else here at New Beginnings. Lori or Jesse or that child right there that's learning and growing in the Word, reading his Bible right now. Every one of us, we put our pants on one leg at a time, just like I put my pants on one leg at a time, just like you do, I hope. I'm just saying it this way. It's not about me but it's about the Christ that's within me. And if we understand that every single one of us is important for the growth and the unification and the edification of the body of Christ, and when you see those kids, 90 to 100 kids on Wednesday nights coming through those doors, you'll high-five them and, and say, you know what, I'm here for you and I love you. You might not be loved at home, 
You might not get fed a lot at home, but we're going to feed you tonight and we're going to love you and we're going to be there for you and that if you need us, we're here for you. Why? Because that's the love that God has called us to give. That is the heart that He's called us to have. And we are to share and shine this living hope that we have. And we're to, we're to hand off this abiding that He has called us to to them. So to know that one day that He's going to appear. And so to know that, hey kids, we're not going to be ashamed. But we're going to be confident in who we are and whose we are for when He comes. Stand with me this morning. I want to, I want to share this story real fast before we close. <coughs> A little boy's mother gets him dressed for church. She combs his hair and she scrubs his face. She dresses him in nice clothes. She says, you can go out on the porch, but I want you to stay clean. <laughs> but he sees some of these other kids in the neighbor's yard. They're playing. And guess what? It rained all night. And uh, he spends some time, time playing with them and as it's about time to get back or to get to leave for church, he comes back to the house and he's all muddy and from top to bottom. And then his mom says, "Well, son, we just gotta go." And uh, to her, that's her son, and she loves him and is acceptable. Sadly, today, a lot of times. You know, church people are really judgmental a lot of times. Thankfully, we don't have that problem here. But to him, to her, that boy was acceptable. But to some of the people at the church, he wasn't. And I want to say this. May we live our lives today every second it is statistically proven that you will have 70 billion breaths in your lifetime. I heard that in a podcast the other day. I thought it was amazing. Let us so live our life in a way that in every moment, in every breath that we take, if Jesus was to step out of glory and come on the clouds and that trumpet would sound, that we would be ready that we would be acceptable to Him to come into His presence and to come into His glory. Are you ready? Are you abiding? Are you watchful? Are you living unashamed of the Gospel of Jesus Christ today? Can I tell you this? I don't care what a kid, a kid looks like. I don't care what someone is wearing. I don't care how much dope they've smoked. I don't care how many drugs they've done. I don't care if they come in here drunk. They will be welcomed, they will be loved, and they will be shown the light and the love of Jesus Christ. Why? Because that is who we are. And they can have a new beginning if they can have the Savior of the world in their heart and in their life. Our motto here is to love God and love people. May we be a church that abides in Him, that is awaiting for Him to appear, and, it, and that is not ashamed when He returns. Let me pray with you. Heavenly Father, Lord, I love You, Lord. I love Your Word, God. Thank You for continuing to send people here to new beginnings that wants to grow in Your Word, that wants to see lives changed by Your glorious grace, by Your glorious Gospel, Lord. Lord, continue to challenge us. Continue to move in our hearts into a new way so that we can strive and live for You day by day. In Your name I pray, Amen. You know...